I'm Chris Mathian, and you're listening to 88.3 WLFC. <laughs> FM. <laughs> You are tuned in to WLFC 88.3, your indie rock and headquarters, broadcasting from the University of Finley. On July 19, 2013, Lydia Z and Miranda headed to Columbus, Ohio. There, they interviewed the band Mathian from Chicago, Illinois at the Scarlet and Gray Cafe. Be sure to stay tuned for the interview coming up next here on WLFC 88.3. WLFC. I'm Miranda. And I'm Lydia Z. We're here with the band Mathian out of Chicago, so if you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves, that would be great, and tell everybody what instruments you play in the band. Hello, I'm Christopher Andrew Lawrence Mathian, and I play the guitar and I sing, and I write the songs. My name is Danye Thompson. I play drums and count to four. My name's Eric Caldo. I uh, play bass. And backup vocals. And backup vocals. <laughs> Mostly bass, though. <laughs> I'm Anthony. I uh, play keys and sing a little bit. Right, you know, yeah, you know, and I'm bringing that very white voice to the babies all around the world. <laughs> He's a show stealer, isn't he? 
All right, so if you guys had to uh, label your music, what kind of jo- what genre it was, what would you pick? I'd say high energy rock and or R and B. We fit interchangeably into the two. Okay, what are like most of your songs about? What do they? What influences you have when writing songs? Um, I write I write about stuff that I know, and it ends up being stuff that's pretty. Uh, it's a lot of humor, a lot of humorous stuff. Um, and then some of it's more serious, it's just stuff that I go through in life, relationships and, you know, not having any money. Um, you know, there's a plethora of subjects I can talk about. So when you, people hear Mathian, what do you think they think? When, the first time they hear your music, what, what do you think they picture and think about? Or what um, would you like them to? I would just like them to think, wow, this is real cool. <laughs> <laughs> I want to dance to it, or or this is something that I really want to. I, I really hope the lyrics pull them in, you know. Hope the lyric, I hope the lyrics pull them in, and they and they can relate to it. I hope I'm not alone in the world. Okay, so you guys are on tour right now, correct? Mm-hmm. So what have what has been your favorite place to perform right now, or what are some dream venues that you would like to perform at? Bowling Green. <laughs> Bowling Green. Bowling Green, Kentucky is such an amazing place. It really is. It's awesome. I never even heard of Bowling Green until it was on our, like, tour poster. I said, oh, it looks like I'm playing Bowling Green now. Um, Eric, really, do you want to talk about Bowling Green, Eric? It's probably best. best. Okay. I just don't want to just, you know, hog the mic here. But another thing, uh, another place we played at was in Nashville. It was called The Basement. And that was really cool because... It was in the basement of this uh, record store, and you go down there, and there's just tons of people there. Was we it in the bottom of um, Grimey's? It was, Grimey's. yeah. Yeah, I uh-huh. went there when I was in Nashville, too. Yeah, that place yeah. is so great. Nice. And um, we just want to play at places where there's people. We don't care if there's, like, a nice PA or anything like that, or if it's, like, a well-known venue or anything like that, either. We just really want to play for people. That's our main, that's our main goal and our main prerogative. Seems easier than it is. So how long have you guys all known each other, and how did the band get together originally? How did you all meet? Oh, man. That's a tricky question to answer. Um, Eric's been the longest-running member in the band as of right now, and he's only been with us for six six months. I've known Danye longer than I've known anybody, but oh, really? Danye's only been playing with me for a couple weeks. And... Uh, and I've known Anthony for a while, too, but Anthony just started playing with me about a month ago. Um, the way the band started was I was making recordings in my dorm um, at Southern in 2005, and I would just take these CDs and pass them out to everyone I saw. And eventually, I was approached by some musicians that were like, hey, I want to start a band and play this stuff. And so that's how the band aspect of Mathian was born. And since then, I had gone through so many different members just because it's tough to uh, it's tough to get um, guys who are willing to just kind of go out there and and risk it and and go for it, I guess you know, because um, the payoff isn't isn't good. But but I really think it'll come. I really think it'll come if we just stick to the music and worry about that, not money. But you know, not everybody feels that way. <laughs> People apparently have to live and pay their bills. I don't really get that. but. <laughs> so you said that you're the main writer of all songs, correct? Mm-hmm. So do you think what's the like, main topics of your songs? Do you think they'll eventually ever change over time? Or do you think you're going to stay pretty steady? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I know they'll change because just right now when I, when I look back at songs that I wrote five, four years ago, I'm like, oh, geez. Turn it off. <laughs> I want to hear this. All right, yeah. So you guys' most recent, recent album was Darling Television. What would you say is different or the same about Darling Television uh, compared to your previous releases? I think, I think with every album that I do, um, the songs kind of go further outside of myself. At least I'm trying to. It's so easy to just be introspective and to write about what you're experiencing but uh with darling television i was attempting to get outside of my own head and and to talk about things that are happening outside of myself because 
just getting older and starting to be a little less selfish, I guess. So what has been your biggest challenge as a band and how have you overcome it or not? If you're still um, working the biggest it? challenge, I guess I already talked about it, um, would just be that it's just tough to, to keep a group of guys together because of the, 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 the nature of the situation. It's hard to keep guys with you that are just down, you know? Luckily, I got a few good men here, but, you know, a lot of stuff can happen and a lot of stuff can change. But um, the way I've been able to over- overcome it is just to keep on going, you know, and just keep on making music. I have no other choice. I'm not doing anything else. You know, I don't have a plan B. And I don't plan on giving up anytime soon. So so what would you what would your advice be for people who want to start their own bands? Just do it. Don't talk about it. Just do it. Get down it. About it, be about it. Yeah. You want to talk, Anthony? I don't know. Just say that. Just don't talk about it. Be about it. That's what you got to tell them, man. All right. I don't know if that picked up on the mic, but maybe they have compressors or something at your radio station. You bring up the levels on that part, huh? A little bit of gain. <laughs> a little bit of gain. Bring the gain up. No, it's the thing is, is, is really just do it. Get uh, whatever your instrument is. Practice it. Um, if you want to start a band, get, 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 in a, get into a basement or get into your parents' garage and start playing. We played with these kids in, uh, in Memphis a couple, a couple days ago. And we played at the Hard Rock Cafe. And these little kids, man, they're like 15 years old. And they went up there and played a bunch of the, these songs that they wrote. And I was just happy to see some young, young kids that weren't trying to do like, you know, wasn't a kid up there with his laptop or anything like that. It was just... They were starting a band, and it was good to see that kids still wanted to do that, you know? Look at me talking like an old man over here now. All right, so for our listeners who didn't make this show and are maybe listening to this recording of the interview in the future, where are you guys headed next, and what are you going to be doing in the near to distant future? Well, I, I, we're going to be in Painesville, Ohio tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to air before then, but... <laughs> Uh, we're going to be in Springfield, Illinois on the 26th of this month. And then um, the day after that, we're going to be in Bloomington, Illinois. And then in September, we're going to go on another tour just like this. So the spots we're going to hit are going to be uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Bloomington, Illinois, Bloomington, Indiana, um, Columbus, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, Atlanta, We'll be all over the southeast and the Midwest. So just if you're look a fan of Bowling Green, there's a Bowling Green, Ohio too. I know. I want to check that out. I want to see what's it's if it's comparable. Cool. You know, it's very close to us. Is it? Is it nice? Yep, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a we got radio town. play out there too, I believe. Yep, they're pretty uh, cool. All the more reason to go out there and say hello. All right. So, any final questions, Lydia? I think that is all the questions we have for you. Yeah, that's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my band didn't talk. That's okay. They were being real shy, but they were here for me. Well, thank you guys a ton for talking to us. And if you don't mind, could you say, I'm Chris Mathian, and you're listening to 88.3 WLFC. I'm Chris Mathian, and you're listening to 88.3 WLFC. (laughs) (laughs) FM. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, guys.